Hey. Hi. Hello, Derek. Derek. Hello, John. Derek. Yes, hello. Hello. This is all of that. I guess I'd be your, what, cousin? First, first cousin two times removed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever that is. I would be your Uncle Charlie's great-grandson. Great-grandson. So I'm, I'm Herb and Eula's grandson. Herb and Eula's, yes. Yeah, I remember them but I, real well. But uh, I think your grandmother, your uh, Her Herbert, was still alive last I heard. But, uh, he died in 1996. Oh, he did. Well, I know Eula died before that. Yep, she died in 1993. Yes, uh-huh. So. How is how is the connection, Derek? Are you able to hear Mama? I, I think everything's absolutely fantastic. Okay, we just, she just had her first call, her first guy, brother Gordon. Oh, excellent. It took us a while to get, uh, get off of that and over to you, but she's, she's just, um, this is her first day with this technology, so. <laughs> I tell you, I'm kind of like Rip, Rip Van Winkle. I'm almost afraid to go to sleep for fear <laughs> when I I wake up there'll be something I very bad different. I like it all right just the way it is. Well, things are changing fast right now. Yes, they are. <laughs> But it's been a, my time and my world has been very, very good to me. And very, as far as I'm concerned, I know there's a, a lot of things that have developed, probably that I don't even know about. <laughs> so. Hasn't affected you too much, not knowing, has it? Yeah. I have been wanting to talk to you. I, I, I started the genealogy thing last summer with my mom, mostly right. for her side of the family, and have become totally addicted. So I just, let's see, it would be Jacob. So your father's brother, Jacob. Yeah. Um, his daughter, uh, it would be Bernie. Louisiana Verna. Yeah. Okay, she married Hank Gott. She what? She married a Gott. Yes, and he was a not a very good, he's an alcoholic. Yeah, I guess. yeah. But, he didn't take very good care of his family. No, but um, one of his daughters has been very helpful because she's done a lot of the family research, and she uh -huh. was really pleased that I found John and you on the internet because we had no idea what happened to the two brothers that went to Kansas. Uh -huh. For some reason, you know, our parents did, our, our grandparents in my case, but she had no idea. Yeah. So. Well, my dad was went to Kansas to begin with because uh, my mother support. Um, health was very bad. She'd had TB mm -hmm. and uh, had even been in sanatoriums for periods of time. Uh, just Derek, and, Derek, I want to give you a heads up. I'm so sorry to interrupt, Mama. We, we are recording oh, this. Okay, then I'll stop taking notes. <laughs> well, I, I, that's assuming that everything works right, Derek. All right. So <laughs> I, I can't make any guarantees. You might want to take some notes. I'll, I'll jot a few things. Oh, yeah. a, a point of disclosure. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, Excellent. Don't do anything you don't want to be caught on tape with. So, okay. Uh, well, Mama, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I thought you might be taking notes. So. I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, the doctor suggested that Daddy move to a climate that wasn't so humid. If you've ever been to Missouri in August. I, I grew up in Columbia. That, that's where... Uh, that's where we would go for our vacations. And I was always glad to get back home because it was so miserable there. I'm 
going down to visit my own mother the second week of June because I will not go down there in July and August anymore. <laughs> Sorry, John. Oh, well, maybe she'll come see you. She comes up here a lot. Yeah. So it was, uh, they went, first they went to uh, uh, several other small towns in Kansas. And I was born at Asherville, which was near Beloit. Okay. Uh, then uh, we moved to, to uh, Colby, Kansas, when I was just 18. And um, uh, Daddy was uh, looking forward to retirement then. He was just hoping uh, he was, it was the pace of being a pastor was, he was ready to let go of it. Uh -huh. And so uh, he did die there. He had a, a, uh, a stroke. And uh, he, this was in the morning that he had it. And in, uh, in the evening, early evening, I was up there with him. And about 7 o'clock, he did die. But he was, he just went so peaceful. And he could been talking almost up to the time that uh, he died. So it was kind of a shock to me. I mean, I wasn't expecting it quite that soon. But uh, then uh, it was uh, it was hard for my mother to learn to live without Daddy because uh, they'd been real close, and she he'd always done everything. He he didn't let her take care of anything. He didn't let her even let her go do the grocery get the groceries. Uh, wasn't that he wouldn't let her, but he just, I'll go get them, I'll go get them. And so she didn't even do that. And, uh, but they, uh, they were happy together. And I'm, and, and like I say, Daddy, his plans were that uh, when he retired and he went, he was going to live near Uncle Charlie and help him farm because he knew Uncle Charlie was uh, not real well. Yeah, yeah. I think he was a diabetic, or is that it? I don't remember what. Could be. He died so long before I was born. I don't know much you know, about him. That's way, way back. Yeah. Because he, he passed in, I believe, 1947. Uh -huh. and yeah. All I ever knew about him was. My great grandma Ida, I don't know if you remember meeting her a time or two. Oh yeah, I remember Anna. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, people, all they used to say was "Poor Charlie." <laughs> Get into it together. I wanted to take some Craig keepsakes. She had all of them at her house, and I tried to get her to give me something, and she said I'd show her something. There was a co coffee grinder. She had on the fasten to the wall, and I said, "How about you give me that coffee grinder?" And Ida, no, you can't have that. And I said, "Why not?" And she said, "Because that belongs to the Craigs." And I said, "And Ida, I'm more a Craig than you are." I said, "I'd like to have it, but I didn't get it." She didn't give in to me. Well, that explains where Aunt Charlene, her daughter, got it from. <laughs> uh, Charlene was the same way. But she, yeah. uh, I didn't wasn't around Charlene a lot, but uh, I was some um, because we'd always spend time at um, Uncle Charlie when we went back there for vacation. Uh -huh. And Charlene Lynn and I would go to a little pond near there and catch frogs. And then we'd cut the legs off of them 
and fry them and uh, have a tea party <laughs> with frog legs. And they, it, they were delicious. They were delicious. And so, uh, but there wasn't very much meat on one. But I know how she was. She was older, and I think when she went, got in high school, she just kind of pretty much moved into Trenton. Yeah. Right. The, the pictures I saw, or I have of her in high school, it's very funny because you'll see Charlie and Ida and Herb and Eula, because she's in a lot of the pictures, and, and Richard, who was very young at that point in time, a lot of these pictures, would all be in farm clothes, and there'd be Charlene dressed up from Fifth Avenue in New York, standing in front of the farmhouse. And that's kind of the way I remember her, too. The few times I met her was she always seemed to think she was destined for better things. <laughs> yeah. Well, she... uh she didn't live to be very old, did she? She died, I think, about 1990. I don't even remember I'm her. Think about, I, I could look it up really quick, but I think, she, I think she actually died in 1990, although we lost track of her before then, or at least uh -huh. most of the family did. And um, her son, Kenny, I have no idea where he is. Well, I don't... Uh, Kenny would say... He the one, Richard was the youngest. Richard, really. The youngest by quite a bit, and he passed uh, 1981 from cancer. But Kenny, I don't think, and I never want to talk about it either. Well, me. So, I don't and know we, what happened with Charles and Charlene, but Kenny pretty much the minute he graduated from high school left, and my dad said he never heard from him again. He went to. Uh, we never went to see him, and I never mentioned him. Yeah. I think she said, uh, did tell us that uh, we went by some business that sold uh, sand or cement or something. And she said, that's that's his, that's Richard's business. Or that's Kenneth's business. Kenneth Senior, yeah. But we never, uh, never met him or never, that was all she said about him. But she did move into town, and Ida did. And that's where I remember her from. And when she was in town. Yeah, she had a little little house over by the park. Uh-huh. The swimming pool was in the park. Yep. Yeah. And I just remember her being a very stern, unsmiling person. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always thought she looked like an, an Indian squaw. <laughs> I did tell her. I could see that. Dark, the dark complexion, dark hair, and she had lots of wrinkles. Even when I first saw her, and she did. She just looked like, and she didn't come. She came from. She didn't come from around Trenton. She was from down around Boonville. What? Down around Boonville, Cooper County. Well, evidently, I don't know how she and uh, Uncle Charlie met. I, I have a theory, because her parents at one point in time moved over by St. Joseph. Oh, uh-huh. And were there for, uh, in between two census, they, they were there. And I have a theory, because I think the brothers used to jump on trains after they got done harvesting at their own homes and ride, ride the train down. And, and, you know, I guess they all used to do this, where they jump off and help other people harvest and get paid for it. And if you look at uh, Herb, Herbert's birth, he was born pretty much about 10 months after the uh, harvest would have been going on. And she was 16 years old when they got married. Oh, really? So I have a, a sneaking suspicion that she was a harvest bride. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. And I also don't find it kind of funny that... Um, they always had my grandfather's birthday on one month, but the actual birth certificate's a month earlier. But we celebrated it the next month. Hmm. <laughs> well, you kind of cheated on statistics, well, didn't yeah, you? I, I think it may have been a shotgun wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Which may have 
may explain <laughs> her behavior. Hold up the family name. <laughs> Derek, uh, does, the, does the term Colts foot ring a bell to you? Yes. I remember mom seeking out what we, I think we, you saw it on a gravestone or something. Do you remember that story? What Somebody was born a Colts foot and we wondered what that meant. Yes. Do you remember that? What's Colt? I think I do. I think I asked Aunt Ida, didn't I? I don't remember. I just remember that. What, well, yeah. There was a. And uh, she was very quiet. And and when she, when she finally told me. Yeah. The other the other terms are Woods Colt. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that might that rings a bell too. I've heard it on both ways. And 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 quite honestly, um, let's see, Benjamin Franklin. Senior was a Woods Colt, as far as we can tell. He and his sister Miriam, um, because John Craig, their father, and I in the Bible that I've got, I've got Frank uh, Frank Craig's Bible from 1843 here at the house. And Rachel Harrison was their mother, and she came west to Grundy County with him and her next and her next husband Felix McClay, and. Uh, Benjamin Franklin Sr. came with them. And then his uh, son, Frank Craig, Benjamin Franklin Craig Jr., would be your grandfather. Do you remember Grandpa Frank? Uh -uh. No, I, I, I didn't. I, I think he actually passed away before you were born. In fact, I know he did because he passed away just after the turn of the century. But, yeah, um, there's, there's no evidence that Rachel and John Craig, Rachel Harrison and John Craig were ever married. Mm -hmm. And the Bible, um, Frank Craig actually puts it, one, writes in his handwriting that his father, John Craig, and he gave a close enough date, um, passed away. And that's the only written evidence we have that he, he was ever acknowledged as the son. Mm -hmm. Well, I do remember that the name Borum came up. Now, what? That, that would be Ben Craig's wife. Yes. So your, your grandfather's wife was. Forum. And that that the land that the church. that church is on was she gave that land to did, yeah. yeah or some but some bore him yeah, did. Yeah, it was her father but yeah and his name was uh, one of her name one of the names that I remember was Catherine Louisiana Louisiana Catherine yes and my sister was named Catherine after her I did not know that. That's cool. Makes sense. Yeah. But I looked one time when we were traveling. <clears throat> we were, um, I think, uh, near the um, border from uh, Illinois over into Missouri. Would that be possible? Mm -hmm. And there was a. Uh, um, a bridge there that we had to go over, and we were, but we were spending some time, just killing some time for, I don't know what reason, but there was a cemetery just kind of up on the hill, and I said, I'm going to go, and it was a small cemetery, and a very old one. I went there, look around, and I saw a lot of Lucille's, which was my sister's name. And I never saw that. She never knew where she got her name. And uh, so I don't know uh, whether it was on the Craig side or the Ward side. Is that bridge possibly in Hannibal, Missouri? Was that Does that town ring a bell? No, not okay. very. I know there's a Hannibal. Yeah. Well, there, there's it's, also some thought that, that Frank Craig's wife, who was the Borum, she passed away when they were coming out to the Grundy County and is buried in Carrico, or uh, she's buried over south of St. Louis. Am mm -hmm. I remember the right one? No, that's a Bryant. That's the Bryant. That's Frank Craig Sr. Um, Louisiana Catherine was married to Frank Craig Jr. Wrong one. Sorry. I get confused too. <laughs> I can't. I can't keep track of all of it. I, I'm doing good to know when I hear a last name like Borum or uh, uh, 
Craig. Or... Well, have you poked around on my Ancestry page? I did uh, for a bit, but then Ancestry.com starts haranguing me for membership, yeah. and I'm just, I've been there, and you, know, you can see I did a lot, but yep. uh, um, you know, I might do it again in another decade or something and catch it up to date, but <laughs> uh, I feel like I added considerably, and uh, I'm glad you're doing your part in it. Well, I'm enjoying it to the point of addiction, but this is why. I, I love meeting family that... Well, I'm so glad that this has worked out at, to this point yeah. uh, for, for more than one reason, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm trying real hard to keep out a little bit, too, but Mom and I have been talking, and I've got a few, hour, a few other audio recordings, too, because I was reading some of your emails to her, and it just triggered the, you know, the, the flow from her about... Uh, you already talked about her once, uh, the woman that liked to dress, had nice clothes, and... Uh, you, Eula. No, that would be Aunt Charlene, but... Herbert's wife, Eula. Yeah. I thought there was another name you were talking about. Aunt Charlene. That, uh, uh, Aunt Ida. The kids Ida. built her a nice, she had a house with a dirt floor. And oh, then, that was Vernie. Vernie. Yeah. Didn't you say Vernie had dressed nice and had... No, well, she... Not she did. Huh? I, she didn't when no. I knew her. <laughs> well, she lived, uh, she married an alcoholic. Yep. And uh, in the afternoon, she and I don't know how many kids she had would walk up to Aunt Ida's and she would feed, she'd ask them if they were hungry. Yeah. So she set them down at the table and feed them. That otherwise they wouldn't. I guess get that was why they came up, because they were hungry, and she always fed them. And uh, Vernie, uh, they were all they would all be barefooted, even uh, Vernie. And I think I was in her her little shack, and I think it had a a dirt floor. But then her children, I don't know how many they. Had they they did very well, and one of them was a mechanic on uh, these big air, air, airplanes there in Kansas City. When they'd come in, he'd mm -hmm. work on them or check on them, see if anything needed done. Uh -huh. I bet I don't know who that was, but uh, Atash. Atash. it's got to be one. I mean, it's one of her uncles, so. Yeah. Her father. Well, probably a TWA mechanic. <laughs> you can't give in Kansas City. That was the yeah they had the overall base, but but Mom was saying that they they built Bernie a nice home. Right? Yeah, just it was uh, just kind of off of uh, Herb's property, um, little south and west of it. Uh huh. Well, her kids built that for mm -hmm. her, and we went to see her there. And uh, I know she had a bunch of old pictures, and uh, she got them out, and we were looking at them. And one time there was a picture of uh, the four brothers, and my daddy just uh, stood out because uh, he... All the others had on overalls and work shoes, and Daddy had was on uh, trousers and a white shirt because he was a. And so, and Bernie pointed to that uh, picture and just lashes, and there's the preacher. <laughs> well, it's very interesting to note that the ultimate Craig that came to the United States in 1743 from Northern Ireland was educated in Edinburgh, Scotland, and he was the Reverend John Craig. And he found, heard the call here in the United States, was ordained by the Presbytery in Philadelphia, and started two churches in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Oh. So as far as I can tell, until my father came along, the only two occupations in the family were preaching and farming <laughs> for about seven generations. 
And I was kind of surprised to find that your father went to college because I thought my father was the first one who had done that. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was interesting. Do I understand he went to William Jewell and Liberty? Yes, he went to school there. Um, he bought, he asked Dad, uh, Grandpa Craig for his, he knew Grandpa Craig was going to give all the sons some uh, land. And so when Grandpa, Daddy didn't have money to go to school. So he uh, asked Grandpa if he could have his ahead of time. And so Grandpa said, well, he just d- divide it up to all of them. Just, well, get it done. And so he did, and uh, Uncle Charlie's was next to Daddy's. So Charlie bought Daddy out, and Daddy used the money to go to college. Tell him about the picture with the hat, with Grandpa Craig, or how they divided the land oh, up. Yeah, they uh, uh, they had a uh, were holding the four brothers were standing there holding up a hat. You could see them reaching their hands in it, and that was what Grandpa just wrote it out on a piece of paper, the different kinds of land and put it in there, and, and they drew it out. And that was their land. And Uncle and Daddy happened to be where the, the house was on, home place. And uh, Uncle Charlie bought Daddy out. And uh, Daddy used that money to go to Liberty, Missouri, to a college. But... Uh, he had been quite a rebel when he was a, a teenager. He, Grandpa would think he was going to school and he would be going to the pool hall. And, uh, Family trip. Yeah. And he uh, finally, uh, somehow, he uh, heard heard some singing, and that was night, so I don't know whether he was not, uh, whether he'd been to the saloon or what, but he decided he'd go in and hear hear that music, and it was uh, a church. And that evangelist shook him up until he he was bawling and going down the aisle. So uh, that was what changed him. So I, I think John told me or someone said or I read somewhere that you, you laugh about him being buried at the Edinburgh IOF Cemetery, which I find kind of surprising since almost everybody's buried in either Coon Creek Cemetery or Mitchell Cemetery, which is over in Harrison County just across the border. Well, how, how did your father uh, and mother come to be buried and, in Edinburgh? Uh, and Uncle Charlie was buried there. Under the a big oak tree, the Mason's uh, Masonic Cemetery, okay. and uh, Daddy's grave. When you joined that lodge, you got a lot with membership, and Daddy's lot was I don't know whether the person how they determined which lot was theirs. But his was far down in the southwest corner, just as far down the hill as could be. And Uncle Charlie's was up under this, uh, I thought, a very been much nicer. And uh, so that was where he was buried. And why? What was Grandpa's motivation for joining that lodge and? buried there. What what appealed I to him about that? I don't that? know what it was. Now, because, you told me that it had perpetual care. Was that it? That's what I remember and, you and telling they me. Had a, he, you mean they had a nursing home or something? No, no. Or that they, they, were, always, they would always take care of the cemetery. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because Coon Creek Cemetery got pretty run down for a while. Well, 
It goes back and forth now. Uh, that could be that. Well, that's what I'm saying, and and I think. Um, and the, the, my recollection of previous tellings of this story from Mama was that that Daddy, her Daddy, would, and I, I just like the way you always would say it, perpetual care. <laughs> that that was the that was the linchpin for his, you know, why he and I chose wonder, that. I wonder why I, Uncle Charlie was buried there too in that cemetery, but I don't know where her the older brothers were buried. They had moved more to southern Kansas, I think. Well, oh, Solomon Turpin did. Now, Jacob, who was actually uh, younger than your father, because it went Solomon, Ralph, Jake, Charlie. And Charlie was a lot younger, like 12 years younger. And there were four yes. others that were born in between there that didn't live past infancy or died, you know, stillbirth. And then... I think Jake's actually buried there too in, in, in that cemetery in Edinburgh. Um, I, I, um, Turpin, I, that's another, we lost track of him and his family too. I've got the last thing I have anything was a Christmas card sent in 1942 that was in the stuff I found from my grandmother and grandfather. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Daddy, uh, Daddy said that his older brothers married sisters. Do you know that? Well, yeah, they did marry. I mean, Jake, Jake, and Jake and Solomon did marry sisters. Yes. And uh, they were. They moved to southern Kansas, I guess, as I remember, to some place like Liberal. Yep, that sounds right. And. Uh, we never did go, they never did uh, come to visit us. The closest was at one time Willard, whose mother I think was Bernie. I need to get on Ancestry Street to follow all this, but go, keep going. Yeah. I, that, I think that sounds right. Yeah. And he came by the hotel one day, uh, uh, not hotel. Our house, uh, it had been fairly recent. Recent. Which house, Mama? On Fifth Street by Harold Grace. In Colby. In Colby. In Colby, Kansas. Okay. And uh, he had been down around Liberal, visiting the Craigs down there. And he, this Willard, lived at uh, near Seattle, Washington. And he, he and uh, Gordon, my oldest son, have uh, met. I don't know who went to see who, but uh, uh, they met, and he. Uh, he told me that he had. Uh, been visiting relatives, and he had a wife. He had just remarried and got a new pickup. And this new wife just couldn't visit because she was just jabbering and talking constantly. She wouldn't shut up. And Grace came over. Uh, we lived in my uh, in a Barnett's had a one of them one of the girls had a home that they and they had houses by them that they rented out and whenever anyone would come see us or that why Grace would have to pop in she'd see that someone had drove up and here she'd be wanting to know who was there, and she wouldn't want to leave. And uh, sometimes, I think a time or two, the boys told her she had to leave. That we were doing, I think it was when my husband died, when Victor died there, and uh, they, they just didn't want 
they just wanted the family to be around. And so very reluctant then, uh, she went home. And his aunt, Willard's wife, uh, they were wondering where they were going to stay. And Grace uh, and his new wife wanted to visit someone in Denver, but she didn't know where she lived. Well, how, Grace knew how to find out by going on the computer or something. So she went over to Grace's with her, and she did find out where this person lived in Denver. And in the meantime, uh, she decided that Grace invited them to stay at her place because we didn't have room for them. And so uh, I did meet Willard then and have a pretty good visit with him. Was it maybe? Was it maybe? But he said uh, when she was, his new wife was interrupting all the time. Willard says, you know, I wouldn't have married her, but she was just right there handy, and I needed a wife, so I, so I just married her. And so, I don't know, I never heard any more about him. But I think he was one of the younger was it Bernie's? Well, I think I maybe one of Bernie's. That's a Bernie, Bernie's kid. Um, Lee didn't have any children. No. Um, and Grace, well, she died when she was 14. And then there was Forrest. Buck. Yes. Buck, Craig? Yes. That's a Okay, Buck. Yeah, I, I thought so. So, so I'm, I was calling yeah. Will, Will. So it would have been Buck because he, yeah, he was out in the Seattle, Washington area. Yeah. And he had Dwayne, James, and Sylvia. And Sylvia actually ended up marrying her cousin, which was one of Vernie's kids. She married Henry Gott. So first cousins got married. <laughs> which happens a few times in the family tree, just so you know. Yeah. But, but anyway, it was good, you know, to have Will, um, this Buck. one, yeah, stop by and visit a while. And, uh, Daddy, when we moved to, uh, Colby, one day he was very he was very anxious. He said, I, I want to go up to uh, uh, west of Kobe to a town called McDonald. It was a small town. He says, I think that I that there's some Browns up there that are uh, relatives of the Craigs and that they might have some, because uh, Daddy was anxious to learn a little bit of his background. And so he went up there and he did meet this man and this man did have a lot of the Craig uh, information of the family written down and Daddy got it from him then. And I think uh, didn't you take it? Wasn't it some that you took, John? Mama, that's a good question. Um, um, it's possible that Cousin Kathy has that now. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Buster yeah. is Mom's niece. Mom's sister, Catherine, had two kids. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Mike Kath and Kathy. Mike and Kathy. So, mm -hmm. so Kathy... Uh, uh, well, her last name wasn't Craig before she got Buster. married, was it? I know. Well, uh, Mitchell. 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 
Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, my, my sister Catherine married uh, William Hamilton uh-huh. Mitchell, who was a snob. And uh, things you won't oh, find on ancestry. This is why I want this. <laughs> And uh, he went to a little, my, my sister Catherine, when she graduated from high school, she went to a junior college in uh, eastern Kansas. I had it on the tip of my tongue, and then I lost it. And uh, while she was there, this William Mitchell was there going to school, and he was from New York City. And uh, so uh, Catherine brought him home, and uh, they, the folks were anxious to meet him, and because uh, Catherine really was getting fond of him, and Mother had fixed a nice meal, uh, for all, for everybody, and and uh, it was ready, and we were going to start getting around the table to eat. And Catherine said, uh, uh, "William doesn't want; he wants us to eat in the living room. I'm going to just fix our plate, and then we're going to go in the living room and eat together." And mother was just started boiling, <laughs> and I think that daddy did too. And uh, mother said, "Well, why? I don't know. Why is he too good to come here and eat with us? Why, surely he can eat at the table with us." But she she didn't want to. She saw Catherine really liked him, and so. She gave in, and they did uh, um, eat in the front room, and Catherine and William did get married. They, uh, he, when he graduated from this little college in Kansas, Highland, Kansas, where it was, he went and studied to be a psychologist in Topeka, and he he worked for the prison. Uh, there was a prison in Lansing, Kansas, and one of his first places that he went to work was at this uh, uh, prison. It was a federal p- prison at Lansing, Kansas, and so uh, they they lived. He and uh, Mitch lived in uh, Lansing for a while while he had that job, and um, then he. I don't know how it came about, but they. They uh, wanted to have these this boy, boys home out in Colorado in a nice set, kind of in a rural area where they could take these boys from New York who were raised like Mitch was and uh, uh, some of them, their parents were glad to get rid of them and they were... Uh, or I guess some of them even getting in trouble uh, uh, with the law. And so uh, uh, Mitch, these boys went to this home and uh, the families paid Catherine and uh, Mitch for taking them. And uh, Catherine really did. She she really 
did get so she loved those boys and enjoyed them. And they had this great big house out on the edge of Boulder, Colorado. And uh, it had horses that the boys could ride. And Catherine loved to ride horses. And she would sometimes sneak out when everybody else was settled down in the evening and ride the horse. And she really enjoyed that. And um, even after the boys uh, left their place, even when uh, Catherine and Mitchell, uh, Mitch, their marriage didn't last very long. And um, and Catherine got a divorce. Did they have any children together? He found... Did huh? they have any children together? Yes, they had two okay. children. Michael, he was, what name was William, William Hamilton, too, but they called him Mike. And it was his nickname. And then... Uh, while Catherine was in the hospital having um, the, uh, his, her next child, who was a girl, and they named her, her Mary Catherine after, uh, her, after Catherine. And um, while she was in the hospital, having uh, this little girl, she found out that uh, the nurse that she thought was her friend and was taking such good care of him was having an affair with her husband. <laughs> That's <laughs> juicy, isn't it? And so uh, Catherine immediately filed for a divorce and she got her a lawyer and her lawyer knew Mitch and he said get he says I'll help you Catherine you get him for all you can I'll help you to so uh, she got uh, him to pay he had to pay for uh, the children he had to pay a hundred a month to each of the children until they were 18. And so she had that money uh, to help raise them. And then she could teach school. So uh, she did, she taught school. And uh, she didn't ever talk, uh, her, her kids, didn't know anything ab about this or not. She never talked very much to him about it, just that she had been divorced. And there was one aunt who was an old maid who lived, she was mo uh, an artist, and she lived in the Craig uh, house no, wait a minute, was it Craig or Mitchell? Mitchell home at Wamango, Kansas. It was just at the edge of town. It was a, a, a nice house built out of rocks that they gathered up around. And, and during the, it would have been Civil War that they were part of the Underground Railroad that they kept these fugitives that ran away from their masters in the south. And I'm probably not telling this straight. But anyway, Annie Maud had been born in this house and she never left it. She was this uh, old maid. And she was wealthy enough, I guess made enough off of her paintings that she had a, 
She didn't do any housework and she didn't cook. She had a cook and she had a housekeeper. And so uh, when uh, she invited Catherine and the kids to come and live with her. And so Catherine wouldn't even have to do anything. But And there were two Mitchells who were lived in, two men and their families who lived in Maumago, and they had been railroad men, and they had retired and evidently were pretty wealthy. And so uh, Catherine lived there with Annie Maud for, for a while. So she moved back from Colorado with the kids. Okay. Yes. Yes, she had. That's where she was. Uh, that's where the kids were born, at Boulder, Colorado. How did she become a teacher? Did she go to school? Yes, she went to this junior college. Uh, at high, when she got out of high school, she went. There was a small junior college at Highland, Kansas, which wasn't very far from where we lived in Whiting. And so uh, when uh, she got out of, graduated from this college, she got a job teaching the fifth and sixth grade in the Whiting uh, schools. And she lived at home and uh, she paid mom and dad for room and board to help them out because uh, they didn't, uh, they weren't getting very much money from their church. And uh, they didn't, they had their washing machine was an old manual washing machine, wooden tub and that, and it was quite a lot of work to to wash, and she got him them electric washing machine, which just delighted Mother. And uh, I don't know how long she uh, taught. I don't remember how long. I know she taught the fifth and sixth grade, but I don't think she was ever my teacher. That. Uh, it, I might have started to school when she started teaching. I don't know about that. Are you needing a break, Mama? I've been talking a long mm -hmm. time. That's what I'm wondering, too. That's about, uh, I'm, I'm about run down, I'm about storied out <laughs> anyway. Well, we should, I would love to do this I, again, and I'd love to I, come see you in person sometime, too. Yeah. I've had to, uh, I've told all I know, nah, and, some I of it, so. and some of it. I haven't heard the story about pipe having to go get tobacco for your... The what? You had to go get tobacco for Grandma Ward. Oh, yeah, my Grandma Ward, <laughs> that was my mother's yeah. mother, lived uh, uh, with us part of the time after... After her dad, after her husband lived, and she didn't know whether she'd ever been married or not even. <laughs> she just said, one morning the neighbor came over. That was his wife had died, and he had these two little kids and wanted to know if, if Mary could come over and watch the kids well, he went out and worked on the farm. And so they said yes and told Mary. So Mary went and got what little bit she had in a paper sack and went to the neighbors and uh, had these, took care of these two kids. And then uh, pretty soon she became Mrs. Ward. Uh, so uh, she, they had, uh, she had these, 
she became known as Mrs. Ward, which she's wife, but she couldn't remember ever having a, a marriage certificate or anything like that. It was just, uh, just happened. And she uh, lived there um, and took care of those children. And those children, when they grew up, uh, they they just thought dearly of Grandma Ward. And even when they were grown, uh, they would want Grandma to come visit them for a while. And they would they see me like they were two girls. And they lived at Bethany, Kansas. And we'd take Grandma up there uh, to see her, see them. And they had a, they ran a restaurant there, as I remember. By the way, I have the Ancestry app on my That's, phone is what I'm doing. <laughs> Trying to follow things. Yeah. So anyway, that's a, that's a story of Grandma Ward. And she lived with us uh, until she died, which was at uh, at Colby Can or Clay okay. Center, Kansas. Right so your brother Billy, do I have that right? You have a brother Billy, or had a brother Billy? Well, yes, William yep. Franklin. And he had. Whose name? His yep. grandpa. On both sides, I, guess. I think. Because that, yeah, that would be it. And then they had a son, Philip. No, it was Billy's okay. yeah. son. Right. And I, I don't think that uh, I don't know whether the folks were still alive when that all uh, happened. Did, did Billy marry a girl by the name of Betty? Okay. Yes, he, Betty Griswold. And her folks were lived at Topeka. And Billy's first job, the, after he graduated from high school, was working in the bus depot. Greyhound That's bus depot. That's actually his obituary. <laughs> so I, I, saw, I saw that in That's, his obituary, so. Yeah. And anyway, Betty worked, there was a little lunch counter at the back. Betty ran the lunch counter, and uh, then when she'd get off, Bill would be, uh, he'd be through with his work, but he'd wait for Betty and he'd walk her home. And then he had enough money to buy this house, and he thought, well, Betty just will live there with him instead of walking home, and so that they, uh, Billy called and said, told the folks that they were going to come on the train. To um, we lived at Alta Vista then, and because he wanted uh, Betty to meet them, and then he wanted Daddy, then uh, he wanted Daddy to marry him, and. Um, because she was pregnant, and so uh, she, uh, they came, and uh, mother fixed a, a real nice supper and her meal, and uh, then later Betty's sister and her husband came, and uh, when they got off work and took them back to Topeka. And uh, she had a twin uh, twin sister, Bonnie. And it, I remember that Bonnie w lived with them a while, but I thought that she had died. I can't remember how that went. Or maybe it was her husband that died. He was at this veterans hospital out in Denver. 
Fitzsimmons, I think it was called. And uh, they had two little girls, I think. And so she came back after her husband died. She came back to uh, Topeka and lived with family there. Did you did you ever? And that did was, you ever meet their, their son Philip? Yes. And then Philip. Uh, Philip was Billy's only child. Philip Edward. He were he was uh, Billy and Betty's only child, and he was obnoxious. <laughs> he was talking all the time, and then just laughing at what he'd said, and it wasn't even funny. And uh, he got married. He was sent, he jo just as soon as he was old enough, he joined the army, and he was sent to Germany. And when he came home, he had married a German girl. And... Uh, she was a she was a real pretty girl, real nice girl, and uh, th they uh, settled in uh, Colorado Springs, and we we lived not far from Colorado Springs, so we had them up a few times, and they came invited us to their place too. So Philip was their only, only child, but he did, he had two kids, and Philip didn't live very long. He uh, got pneumonia and had to go to the hospital in, uh, he went to the, since he was a veteran, I don't know what hospital they had there. But anyway, he he died and uh, left her there with uh, Jolie and Alma. With the two children, I've got Jolie and Alma as their kids. Jo what? Jo 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 Joel, Joel, I got my contacts and can't read. Jo Joel and Alma as their kids. I don't know. I don't know his wife's name though. Do you recall Philip's um, wife's name? You didn't no, know his Philip's wife. His wife. Philip's wife. You remember what his wife's name was? This German girl? Yeah. I don't... Her name was uh, Janine, I think. But I don't know what her Janine's last name was. more than I was. had. <laughs> That's outstanding. That's, that's that outstanding. That right? That's more than I had. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Are you getting tired, darling? We've been at this over an hour, and I, I will keep uh, you going forever, but I don't want to wear you out. You're probably tired of listening. You want to take a bathroom break? or? Uh, I need some water or something. Well, like I thought you might sound a little parched, too. Some water. Uh, I'm going to be leaving. I have to leave early in the morning um, uh -huh. myself, Derek. So, uh, I mean, right with me. Yeah, I really enjoyed having your John here visiting with me. And I, I live, my youngest son and his family uh -huh. live upstairs here. And um, Is she talking about the bad son you? again? Out Terry, who's your, who's your favorite? Well, you're my favorite, you know that. And all the other kids know well, it too. While you guys have been chatting, I've been listening too. But I've also been on my uh, smartphone looking at. Uh, t Mom just got a new uh, flat screen digital television.
And uh, I noticed it has an HDMI jack, and I knew Skype makes um, cameras for the televisions. And this has yes. been a really wonderful, on so many levels, Derek, for us, too, because I'm going to share this with everybody that she did not talk about. <laughs> she did not call up. <laughs> I want to. I want to know about him too, okay. Derek. I want to know. I know about uh, that. You're a professional. I am. Uh, I sang opera full time for six years. Um, I've taught music basically since I was 19, so 27 years, 28, 28 years now. Um, I'm back in school getting uh, an associate's degree in IT, though, so I can get a job because I can't find a job teaching at this point in time at a college anywhere nearby. Um, my father was Herbert also. He was Herbert Warner Craig um, after his grandpa, Charlie, Charlie Warner Craig. And my mother is from the Kansas City area. She grew up in Raytown, Missouri. And her uh, her father is from around Minneapolis, where I live. He, uh, his parents immigrated from Sweden. And then um, I have a, a sister, Dana, who's 18 months younger, Dana Elizabeth, and she lives in Michigan. Um, and she was married to a young man by the name of Michael Petsinger, and they have three children. Their oldest, Claire, will be 15 this November. And then the twins will turn nine June 1st of this year. Um, Claire Elise is the old one, oldest one. And then the twins are Michael James, pet singer, and um, Lillian Eileen, pet singer. And then I'm recently divorced, and I have three children. Um, my my ex-wife's name is Margaret D. Young. She's Canadian, and her parents are both from Holland originally. Um, but we have three children. My my oldest son is Colin, Colin D. Young Craig. He was born in 2005, September uh, 27th. Then my uh, first daughter is Anna Christine Craig, and she was born April 3rd, um, 2007. And then my little redheaded girl is um, <laughs> Olivia Margaret Craig, and she will be turning four on June 8th of this year. So, and they're a handful mm. and a lot of fun and keep me going to soccer games and string recitals and swimming lessons. But... Uh, that's in a nutshell me. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to a new new tact in my life at almost 47 years old. Gonna go out and, and do computer stuff for a living because it's the only other thing I've ever found interest in, and there seems to be a lot of jobs available right now. Yeah. Now I do sing yeah, with a professional choir, and you can make Jonathan get on YouTube and find some of our recordings and videos of us. So. I do that. Yeah, I think I have lessons, that just from Google Vocal Lessons, and there's lots of YouTube videos of the music we do. Vocal Essence, B O C A L, and then Essence, E S S E N C E, all shoved yeah. together as one word. I have what I have done some. Uh, have <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Keeps me busy. So I, yeah. I still do that professionally as far, as, and we're actually going to be going. Um, sort of the Olympics for choral music is the World Choral Symposium. And it's going to be in Seoul, South Korea, um, August of 2014. And it's by invitation only. And we've been invited to come represent the United States. So we'll be, yeah, spinning. We just found that out two weeks ago. We're all, so that'll be fun. Is that going Some to be of it I'm sure will be, and I'll think? let people know, believe me. Well, I'll have something to brag about. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a little part of the world, but I sure enjoy it a lot. Because, uh, you know, the Barnetts uh, were a very proud family. And when I married Victor, and um, he was in the service, and we didn't go, it, the war was over when we went back, when his dad wanted the boy, his fam, boys to come back and run the farm. And uh, so we went back there and one of his brothers came up to me and said, now, I want you to remember you're a Barnett now. And 
you be careful how you act because we don't they were a good family well they were until our family came along huh? it, was, it was a good name until our family came along yeah yeah well i don't know about that well just ask <laughs> any of them <laughs> You know, I uh, probably a decade or more ago, I I was so I, I, I gave real serious consideration <laughs> to changing my name legally to John, to wow. Jonathan Craig. I just I just liked the sound of it, and I I you know I always was more I, I was more intrigued by the Craig side of the, my family than the the but I grew up with the Barnett, so there was that you know yeah. familiarity breeds contempt. And I got very familiar with a lot of the Barnetts. Sure. <laughs> I'll leave the rest. Well, I've been fascinated by the Craig family, family, especially around Grundy County. I, I lived, long story short, my father was a doctor, orthopedic surgeon, and he also was boarded in physical, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation. And uh, at one point in time, my junior year of high school, he got kind of disgusted with the big practice he was in and moved back to Trenton and did an out-of-the-hospital-at-Wright-Memorial practice three days a week and farmed the other four with Grandpa. And I got talked into moving up there the summer between my freshman and sophomore year in college. By the end of that summer, I was pretty well convinced I was related by blood or marriage to everybody in Grundy, Harrison, and probably Davies counties. Because everywhere I went, I'd be introduced to somebody. Well, okay, I'm at the high V and I'm writing a check for my groceries, and I put it down... And the girl looks at it and goes, Derek Craig, are you Herb Craig's grandson? I was like, yes. Well, I'm a god, and we're related. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I have that experience mine when Mike and I go up there, and, and it, it oh, same becomes thing. known he's a wit. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, which wit are you? Which Are you, uh, you know, this or that or that or this? And. Uh, there's a lot of wits up there, too, and I've, I've mentioned to you in an email that when we go to the Coon Creek Cemetery, there's a, a tombstone there for Cinderella oh, Wit, which is just, just think of the name, Cinderella, you know. I wonder when I heard that. Cinderella Wit, and then there's another tombstone or set of tombstones, and I don't even know if I could find it again, but there was, it was either, it was somebody on the Craig side, it was either Craig or Borm maybe, but, uh, and a Wit. Yeah. So we know there were some some marriage, which they support, based on what you're saying, it was a lot there's, of intermarriage. There's inter two inter women married into the family that I, I can recall off the top of my head, and I think one of them was to a Borum. I might, I might actually take some, I might actually get back onto Ancestry and see if I can't do a little tracking with his side of the family back and see if there's some, because we've always thought it'd be pretty, um, I don't know what amazing, ironic, or amusing if there was some some connection in the past of generation or two or three back, and uh, if you if you if you consider reincarnation or things like that, it's yeah, like, I, it, is it, it possible? It's, here's the, the funniest story I've come up with for this entire thing. So Benjamin Franklin Craig Sr., his full blood sister Miriam, married a young man whose last name, oh shoot. Well, uh, yeah, long story short, the, the, the person that she married had an aunt who was actually my four times great grandmother on my mom's side. Because <laughs> apparently Fairfax, Virginia area was a very small community at that point in time. So I'm redundantly related to the um, children of Miriam Craig through both sides. So, you know, bizarre little things you find out when you do that. So it, it's very possible, especially when you look at everybody would seem to be intermarrying in that in that northern Missouri area at that point in time. Because, I, you know, I, I think there was a, a certain rush to get the land right after it was opened um, for settlement. And then the families kind of stayed there <laughs> for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, I know, like I said, I really got a point where I take anybody on a date that summer was kind of off the uh, plate. <laughs> how, far, how far back did you get uh, on the other side of the, in, in the Europe and Scotland? Because it seems to me like I actually remember, but with Ancestry.com, it becomes a little well, um, uncertain. Yeah, You're kind of um, other people's word for it, but I swear 
well, to the point about like a know, king that, of Scotland or something? Problem, is that, that particular line it makes an assumption that John Craig, Reverend John Craig, is the son of William Craig, who was also in that area in Virginia at the same time. There is no evidence of that. Now, there is... The only thing, um, the Reverend John Craig actually did an autobiography, which you can read, and it's in Kitty Kennerly, which was um, Frank Craig Sr.'s half-sister, wrote a genealogy, and she, of course, leaves out Miriam and Frank. Um, but her, she points out that that's not possible, and she has his, uh, the Reverend John Craig's autobiography in there, and the only thing that he actually says about his parents is he was born in the twilight of their years. Um, we do know that he was born in just north of Belfast, Ireland, in uh, Donegore Parish, County Antrim. And he was educated in Edinburgh, Scotland, okay. which to a lot of people, you know, obviously they're part of the Ulster Scots or the Scots-Irish. And a lot of people then make the assumption that they're tied into the, uh, the Craig family that's from around uh, the Edinburgh area, which is, a, there is connection to minor royalty and possibly one of the kings. But I, I have not seen any conclusive evidence that links him to it, if you understand the fact that he was not, in fact, a son of this William Craig, that every most of the people on Ancestry have him linked as the son of William Craig. And while William Craig did, in fact, have a son named John, uh, the birth date's totally wrong, and there is proof that the Reverend John Craig was born in Northern Ireland, not, not in uh, Virginia. So, I don't... Well, I knew it was... I knew it was pretty tenuous because you were accepting somebody else's okay. linkage at that point. They they claim that so you just accept it or or you do what you're doing, which is actually verifying and researching. The main I line I, I, I kind of verified research and I and I lost it there. I know he came in through Delaware in 1743. Um, someday I will ho I will hopefully it's it's one of the things I want to do is go back to the Northern Ireland and see if I can't figure out exactly who his parents really were. Um, his wife, um, Isabella Helena Russell, is also from Northern Ireland, same area, same county. And don't know much about her family either. Okay. And they met over here in the United States. I, 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 my understanding is that whole Scots-Irish crowd, or the, the Ulster Sc uh, Scots, as they get called, the whole reason he was tapped to go to the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia and start these two churches is because it was basically settled by the Ulster Scots, and they were kind of, well, very clannish to be blunt. The entire time they were in Northern Ireland, they never actually intermarried with the Irish. And they were there for two or three generations, depending on the family. So, part of one of the things I want to do. Well, well, hopefully we'll figure out another way to, uh, a, a way to do this again, or further, or, um, you can, I'm sure mom would I not would mind if you do. called her on the telephone. That that can be her phone okay. is is unpredictable, and it, it it's one of the reasons I don't call her more often because uh, I'm amazed this Skype call is held up, uh, you know. Uh, but her phone, her landline is crap, and uh, it just kind of fades out on her. So it's a little it, it can be a little tedious, but you wouldn't mind if Derek called you, you'd remember who he is. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I think so. But you'll. But you'll never get her to call you. Trust, take know, my word for it. I never. Uh, I. I wouldn't be able to. Um, uh, play from talking to you and you telling about your family roots. I wouldn't know. Uh, I haven't remembered all that since you've been telling it. I'll, but, I'll see uh, if I can get. Send me a link. I, I still have the link to your ancestry. If they'll let me on there without paying, I don't know if they'll. Uh, let me do I that. I thought you could not. do a guest um, account I can't and just see it anytime you wanted to. You just can't get in and do anything to it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go and find out, uh, Derek. I thought oh, it was I, like you could do that I, for 30 days or something, and then they they, and they want you well, to. Well, tell and, you what, do you have you know, a secondary email address? I, or do you want to just go make one really quick <laughs> and just send me an email, and I'll just shoot you another Oh, I might do that. I'll, send, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll follow up my email with you. I've got all a lot of email. I have this has been email wonderful. Addresses, so. I, I really thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I thank you. I'm, I'm glad to find out <laughs> I'm a relative of yours. Well, so am I. Oh, and I, I would love to pick your brain again sometime, and I'm sure I'll give you a call, or we'll try this again when Jonathan's out there. 
Yeah, and I, and you don't look old enough to. Oh, have I've done sung in Germany and done all done. sorts of things. I'm a little bit older than I look. I'm only ten years younger than John. And you're picking up on the names. You're calling her oh. Olivet instead of Lulu. Uh, and you're calling me John instead of Jonathan. Nobody in my family calls me Jonathan unless I'm in trouble. But, well, <laughs> I will let you go and recuperate. So, we probably warn you out and you'll go to bed early tonight. But I look forward to talking to you again sometime. She might, but probably not before we go eat. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'll look forward to hearing from you, John. Keep our priorities. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.